Hello there, I'm Black Bright, broadcasting out of the UK, bringing you another video um, that I hope is of interest. This is about, you know, like we've got our passwords. Well, we won't have them anymore. So this is about that. And for some of us, I guess it will be like a breath of fresh air. You know, increasingly we're told we can't use the same password. We've got to mix common letters with capital letters. Then we've got to have these symbols and then it's got to be up to eight characters. And then you're not supposed to use the same password for this, you know, for different things. Every um, thing you have is supposed to have a different password and it can get a bit a pain in the ass, can't it really when you think about it and yeah so many of us are opting <coughs> here comes that cough <coughs> that'd be my trademark actually so many of us are opting to use our thumbprint we didn't really want to use our thumbprint because we know that is by um, biometric data and we don't want to use our face recognition because we don't know where it's going and now they're talking about they can use our ear canal. They've got these special buds and the ear canal has a unique sensor, according to the Chinese, that they can use and obtain biometric data from. So what they and what else they're saying is that they'll be able to tell from our gait, the way we walk, um, the sound of our voice, and in essence, you know, the future phone it's not even going to need a password. It's not going to need anything. It's just going to feel us coming and we're going to have a look at it or we don't even have to have a look at it. We just have to go near it and it will know it's us. It's going to be so fine-tuned with sensors and radars and all sorts that we won't even... Passport, passwords are a thing of a past. Let's put it that way. We won't need a password. So all that zigzag you're doing on top of your on your phone, I mean, that's easy to kind of do. But or even that you won't need. Now, I don't know what happens to people who do not keep up with technology. And like my workplace, they still have the old Nokia. You know, those little Nokias are about that big and they're quite thick. They don't have nothing on them. I don't even know how they use them. But literally, you can just use them to phone and text. So I don't know what they'll do with people who are stuck in the ages and who don't want to get a new phone because they don't want to be monitored. And they, you know, what are they going to do with those people? Unless they decide to give them free phones, free up-to-date phones, they're going to be stuck in the arc ages and, you know, they're not going to be tracked. And that'll probably be the older generation who won't want to upgrade their phone because the new phones are too technological but they'll have phones with face unlock like I said you just look at it and it unlocks and all sorts um it all depends where you want to go with this really I mean do you really want something that's that convenient I mean on the one hand you can kind of say well at least hackers can't break into your you know can't break a password you know they can't break into your biometric data although they have said that they can find ways like supposing you've put your phone down or you know and it takes a photograph of you some obscure way of accessing the data but it's very very difficult when they use biometric data so it's a question of do you want to have your phone is what's in your phone so sacred that it needs to be that safe i mean we all have little bits and pieces on our phone i don't think there's anything on my phone that i consider sacred i just want to know that i can contact my friends and my family and you know colleagues and stuff and all my contacts are in there and basically you know that is my most important and of course you know your photographs but I wouldn't even say they're that important. Providing I've got a couple of, you know, my loved ones, then I think I'm pretty happy. So I think more or less. And also, I think what's important for me in particular is having a record of 
things I've written to people, so emails, but they go, I think you can get them anywhere anyway. So even if you lose your phone, at least you can pick them up as long as you've got your email address and your password. Well, passwords won't be used anymore. But anyway, whatever way they, you, you know, whichever way you use them, at least things like that, for what is important to me, I will still be able to access it. So technically, I wouldn't really need the latest phone. Um, it's easy if I want to use the phone to do my vlogging, but I don't use the phone to do my vlogging. I use a laptop. So it all depends where you want to go with this. I mean, it really is quite extreme where they're going with this, what they're finding about the, about the human body, the sensors and the, ra the how it connects with radars and all sorts. It's absolutely fascinating. Fascinating. Anyway, let me just give you a quick, does oh, it don't look that quick to me, but let's hope it's quick because I want to, Chot off, um, move over digital passwords and make way for biometrics. Not everyone has a modern smartphone, which I've said, um, so they won't have the biometric parameters like facial recognition, voice detection, finger scanning, and more. So detecting the trusted user will be difficult. Also, even you know finger scanning. You know, like when you put your finger across. Um, the phone's face to do something or to tap every single gesture every micro movement is being um, monitored and censored and creating a you so you become the password that's what that's what I think that's Google's latest I mean in the pixel 4 the latest phone I think that's its headline you are the password but what they're doing, they've, like I said in a previous, fix, um, a pre previous video, they've got Project Soli, and every it does micro sensing. Every micro move that you make, it's all um, captured on this tiny little. Don't even know what you call it. It's like a grain of sand, and they put that into your phone. And that phone will be able to pick up every single sense that you have, every move. Every move I make. Yeah, anyway. Yeah, it's, it can pick up everything. It's kind of scary, but in another way, it's hard, really, because on the one hand, you kind of think, oh, yeah, it's convenient. And in another, in another way, you're thinking, bloody hell. What what these phones are doing are predicting your movements, your actions, everything. That's what they're doing. So they predict it so that they can actually react to what they anticipate that you're going to say, what you're going to what you're going to do, and everything. And that's kind of scary because it takes a control out of you, and it's almost like that phone will be controlling you. You won't be controlling the phone. You go near the phone and it's 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 saying, oh, she wants me to turn on now. You might not want to. You don't you might not want it turned on. You might just be passing the phone. You might just be looking at it to see if I don't know, like now, sometimes, you know, you get these little pop up messages and you might just look at it to see who sent you a message. But you don't really want to open the message. So how does it determine what you want to do at any particular time? Just by looking at it doesn't mean that you want to use it. So it's supposed to be predicting what you're doing and what it, what it anticipates you want to do. You wave one way and apparently the clock's supposed to go round and you're supposed to move your finger this way and something else is supposed to happen. I don't like that. I want to be able to control what I am doing with my phone. I don't want it anticipating what it thinks I'm going to do. But with the new phones, that, especially the Pixel 4, that is what you can expect. Anyway, that's me with my little rant. So, um, so did you know your ear canal can be used for biometric identification? Since everyone's ear canals 
and the sound that resonates within them are unique, Japan's, I said China, sorry, Ch Japan's NEC Corporation has begun capturing sound resonating data with a special identity earbuds that produce a 99% identity accuracy rate. Your ear look inside your ears, you know. Look how far they've gone. Honestly, got FCCA approval in 2019. I think that was for Soli. Um, Google have apparently done market research by pay, paying people of all skin shades to make sure that the algorithms recognize people of color. Because you know the algorithms, they don't recognize people of color. So I'm not quite sure how this face recognition is going to work. But apparently Google has been proactive and they've made sure it captures and it gets used to people of all shades, all genders, all ages. So it won't have the problems that the facial recognition cameras the police use have or what they use in the home office. It won't come up with that because, I mean, they really need, they can't afford for it to... Um, it for it to misdiagnose or it to not to recognize who's looking at it so they've had to go out and do market research to make sure it recognizes all races which i think is quite interesting why don't the police do that and the home office and whoever else uses it to um, catch criminals but probably it will be linked at some point with google and they'll just have one center database i think google will do all the legwork and then they would then link up because they're all link linking up anyway, to be honest. They're going to have one cloud, one major database. I think Amazon might, I think Amazon links up, is um, got this kind of contract with the Home Office and the NHS and all of that. So I guess Google will be doing the same. So I think they'll be doing different aspects of the biometric data. So... You know, like they're doing their market research, Google, and Amazon is doing theirs. I think they'll all come together in some way so that they have some accurate information in the end. Um, let me see. Google recently announced plans to replace digital passwords with biometrics using their Trust API system. Trust API monitors location, speed, voice and typing patterns. So devices can learn about their owners and how their owners operate. So like the typing patterns, what happens when like me, if I'm on my computer, I might at one point, I might not be using my two hands. Sometimes I just use one finger all over the place. I don't, not like when I type at work, when I type at work, it has to be, you know, I've got to behave in a professional and proper manner. So I use my two hands to touch type. But not when I'm at home. If I've got something in my hand, I could be eating and going like that. So I don't see how that works. But look how they're trying to learn how we operate, though. Honestly, trying to work out all our movements, everything from our, the iris in our eyes, from our ears, from our hands, from our walk, from even our heartbeat, apparently. That's next on. They're working at our bloody heartbeat. Honestly, what can I say? Uh, consumers appear to be fully on board according to the latest research. I don't know which research that was. Um, more than 80% of all users are open to biometric authentication. That's because we all want things quick and easy. We're too damn lazy. And we're getting used to convenience and we've been conditioned for convenience and everything is becoming easier and quicker. And so we don't have no patience and we don't even have patience in our relationships. It's all a part of the same thing. You know, if you if you t say to your old man, oh, listen, go and pick me up that and he takes half an hour, you're like, you know, you start getting impatient, agitated. And likewise, he, he says, oh, pass me that. If you don't pass it straight away, he doesn't realise it's the programming. But it's like, well, that why are you taking so long? I asked you for that. What, you know, expects you to give it to him straight away. No dilly-dallying. 
But that's how relationships and families are becoming. They want things now when they ask for it. They want things now. Even at work, you know, I've got this person. And every now and then, oh, have you, you know, she'll send me an email. And within seconds, oh, have you read it? Have you done what you've, have you, and she's around my desk. Have you done it? I'm just like, bloody hell. I said, yeah, I look at the email. I said, you only just bloody sent it. Oh, yeah, but, but that is the way we're being conditioned to have immediate returns, a fast turnaround. We really have to take stock and realise that we're being controlled. We really need to slow down a little bit. When you ask somebody to do something, wait. They'll, get, they'll do it. Not forever. Not like <laughs> I know somebody, his wife asked him to do his, the garden. <laughs> he says he's going to do it. I think it's about three weeks ago. He still ain't done it. I said to him, it's going to rain. You're going to have bad weather. Oh, yeah, well, well. His wife gets so peed off. So I'm not talking about that kind of stuff, but I'm talking about, you know, asking for stuff and getting things back in a reasonable time. Um, what else? Um, believing it will be more, okay. Users are open to biometric authentication, believing it will be more secure than traditional username, password combinations with hackers easily and persistently using brute force methods and modern graphic cards to crack passwords, Biometric seems to present a more secure alternative. Consumers are understandably weary of other alternatives to password and username since even secret question answer combination, combinations used as extra security can purchase online these days. Plus, it's hard to remember. Like I said, you know, sometimes they, you know, they ask you these secret passwords and secret names. You're like, oh, bloody hell. What did I say? You know what I mean? It's, it is it is a pain in the butt. And yet you do want to be secure. You understand why they ask. But sometimes I think, what's your favourite school now? Was it my secondary school or was it my primary school? And I forget because at the time that they asked me, I had one school in mind and then maybe later on I might have thought about something nice about my other school and then I think it was that school. So I'm useless at this stuff. So Google is answering the call for more security by utilising biometrics with the goal that identification methods be become not just more secure but also easier and more convenient for customers. Yeah, so like I said, we're all being mind conditioned with biometrics as an industry expected to reach 21.9 billion by 2020, this seems like a pretty solid business move on Google's part. And that Pixel 4 phone, I reckon it's going to cost about 1500 if you're thinking about it. What is Google Trust IP API for those of you who don't know? Um, I did write down what the API stand for, but I'm sure you can look that up. Um, Trust API is Google's biometric solution, and it was first introduced last year as Project Abacus. The goal of Abacus was to get rid of passwords. Actually, this is outdated. I remember now because I was right. I was typing it up. And I realised that I think the source was pre-2016. But anyway, the content is relevant to a degree. So I'm still going to tell you what it says. Um, the goal of Abacus was to get rid of passwords by using a collection of identity indicators and sensors on the Android smartphone. On the Android device, Trust API monitors your location, the way you type and the way you move, including how you swipe your screen, to name just a few. It also monitors facial and voice recognition and then analyzes all the data to proceed a trust score, which indicates how likely the user of the smartphone is actually the authorized party and owner of the device. That's all about Google has revealed about Trust API at this point. And as of August 2016, yes, yeah, see, the tech giant is beta testing its methodology with, with a large security conscious financial institution if the testing goes well. But I think 
the Pixel 4, I think that's coming out in October. So even though this is a bit behind, it's kind of forecasted what is happening now. So we have a little background, actually. We get a sneak preview. Trust API will be available to Android developers and consumers by the end of this year. Um, with Android holding about 81% of the market share over Apple. Wow. And other smartphone manufacturers. This means that biometrics will enter not just the mainstream biometrics. Users will be in the majority. The thing is, why it's um, over Apple is because Apple has got some security that the biometrics don't like. And my next phone is going to be an Apple because it doesn't open you up so freely to all of this new fandangle stuff. So I still prefer an Apple phone, although I do have an Android because, to be honest, they are quicker for certain things. But what I want to secure, um, I use my, sorry about that. I know you go on about my bloody, um, what's it called? Fire alarm. Now you'll be saying, oh, why you got that phone on? Why, why she got that phone on? Why doesn't she turn it off? I can't stand the noise, it's irritating, it's distracting. You always find something to complain about. But hey, that's life. Life ain't always nice and smooth and how you want it. So don't worry about it. Try and forget about the phone and its funny little noises. Anyway, um, biometric technologies goes beyond smartphones. MasterCard is testing an app that uses selfies to analyze and confirm identity before authorizing purchases online. Now, I put that into action because I um, decided to open a Starling account, which is one of those virtual banks, a neo bank, and it is run by MasterCard. And I did have to use facial recognition. And as I did, it, I thought, oh, do you really want to do that? I thought, you know what? <sighs> I just can't be asked to be worrying about everything. And I know maybe I'll regret it, but hey. But anyway, I use the facial recognition and I use the thumbprint and Bob's your uncle. I've got a Starling account, an international account. You can use it anywhere in the world. And it's it sounds brilliant. And I mean, I've read up all the reviews. The reviews are very good. I mean, they do have a couple other other choices. I think they've got quite a few choices, but I think Starling is third at the top. And, you know, there's pros and cons with all of them. I think some of them, um, anyway, I can't remember what they are. Not really, it's not really important now, anyway. Okay, so MasterCard, um, I said to confirm that, confirm identity before authorizing purchases online and now working with a third party developer on a heartbeat monitoring bracelet what did i tell you the thing is is that they've already got that with those heart rates and the you know the phone watches so it already does that so i don't know if they're expecting people to wear a bracelet as well as um have a phone and I don't like the idea of bracelets that are phones anyway, but they're trying to combine the two. That's not going to work with a lot of people. Um, financial institutions in Europe and Canada will be the first to get this technology. Banks are on the forefront of biometrics technology. Wells Fargo has already invested in iris scanning technology for their online banking app. While iris scanning technology is pretty well known, Ear canal scans are less so, since everyone's ear canal, and that's why I said before, the sound that resonates within them is unique. So there's a 99% identity accuracy. So that's what I said. They're going for your eyes, your ears, your hands. And then while they're putting these sensors in clothes, you're going to have them in clothes. You'll be full of sensors and radars, and you'll be probably be getting a cheap thrill. At this rate, honestly. Biometrics are not bulletproof. Biodata theft is possible, like anything else in tech. Biometric has the potential for serious security flaws. Hackers can take photos of a user's face or swipe fingerprints of off a glass at the restaurant and then manipulate and reproduce those indicators to gain full access to your smartphone and other online apps. But the thing is with that, 
I mean, okay, you're sitting in a restaurant, a hacker takes your photograph. He's then going to have to bank on you leaving your phone on the de on the table and go to the toilet or something. Isn't he really? And how can you swipe fingerprints off a glass? You can swipe fingerprints off a glass, but how many glass tables are there? I mean, that is a bit random, a bit far-fetched. But I guess what they're saying is, it is possible. Um, since you can change your passwords, but not your finger fingertips or iris scans, once your bio data is hacked, you are pretty much compromised forever. So, yeah, what they're saying is if you are hacked with this bio data, you know, there's no way you can change it like you can change a password. You can't change your eyes, can you? You can't change your fingerprints. But I think that's very, very unlikely. But you never know. But like I said, you know, a long time, you know, one of my videos, supposing you get knocked out and they've got your phone, they can use your fingerprints because I don't think anything happens to them once you're dead. Or if you're knocked out and they can use your fingerprint to press your phone they can put the phone in your face and so it can open up and it'll be even worse with these sensors because if you're dead and that that phone just has to have you in a certain parameter or perimeter then it's going to go off it's going to be open and it's going to be open to anybody and that's going to, and you see, once you're in somebody's phone and then you have all of these programs like your banking and they're picking up your dead hand and putting it on the, on the sensor, you know, they could do anything. So you could be dead and they're, they're getting your ID. Can you imagine? Sounds a bit far-fetched, but I wonder if they've thought of that. The dead people, you know, when they kill them, how, uh, you know, how, what are they, what, what? Prevention, what protection is there in place if, you know, hackers want to knock somebody out to get their phone and they're using sensors? Does that make any sense to you? Probably not. Maybe I um, live in a dream world, but I think it's I think it's feasible. Constant monitoring is creepy. Many users are uncomfortable and the idea that they that their every move is being monitored, even if it's only on their smartphones. The wealth of user information produced by this technology will be enormously valuable to both legitimate businesses, the government and the dark web making users even more vulnerable to attack. And I'm going to put the source of this information in the description as usual. So how can biometrics help businesses in the future increase registration with increased confidence? Customers might be more willing to give up their personal data if they're more confident it's secure. Data and insights abound. The amount of information you'll be able to learn about your customers and how you can better serve them is truly mind-blowing. Better security is possible. Biometrics done right could lead to fewer cybersecurity issues like incidents and data breaches. Even though biometrics has been around for a while, this could be one of the largest pushes to the mainstream that it had, iOS thumbprint identification notwithstanding. So there's something about the iOS that they don't like. If your business has an Android app, or even if it doesn't, keep close watch on the Trust ID updates. Consider multi-factor identification, something HP offers on all Elite PCs. If you have an HP Elite Pad, you can also add on a security jacket, which has integrated fingerprint and smart card readers to prevent unauthorized access to data. So, they're talking about a multimodal system. Not everyone has a modern smartphone. Um, we have already said that. Oh, that um, Project Abacus is an advanced technology and projects program aimed at killing the password. Um, possibilities of the human hand human actions and applying it to the virtual world that's the project solely i was telling you about uses radars to track the human hand 
micro motions, twitches, and use it to interact with other devices. Transmits radar wives, gesture recognition, pipeline extract specific gestures. High positional accuracy. It works by constantly paying attention to who you are and how you behave. The end result is a constant system that generates a trust score based on your usage, including how you type words and what apps you load on top of things like voice and face detection. So, it's like, um, what do they call it? What do they call those people that, you know, when you're copied? You know, like a clone. Really and truly, you know, they're cloning you, but just not physically. But those phones are actually cloning you. The solo, the Soli radar can work through materials, shrink the radar and put it in a tiny chip, very reliable, no lasers, it can't break. Still in its developmental stage, but that was in 2016. The Pixel 4 Mobile contains the wireless motion gestures, apply it to new phones, biometric authentic, authentication and face unlock. They'll be larger and heavier, than, than the light thin phones that we're used to. Project Soli first unveiled in 2015 and is in the mobile phone. Short range radar technology is more precise, but the battery cost is unknown. They're saying that with all this new stuff, how long is the battery gonna last? Is it really effective? I mean, as it stands now, batteries don't last long anyway. So can you imagine with all these new gadgets that are going to be in the background refreshing and it's going to be active all the time? It's going to be using up your battery. And you're not even going to have a choice. It's not like you can take it out. I think they really have to work on that battery thing, you know. Uh, the difference between Project Soli and other gesture systems that use cameras like the LG G8 is that the radar allows much more precise measurement. In the demonstration on stage, Project Abacus was able to clearly tell the difference between two users, which means the security measure could eventually do things like lock down all the apps in real time when someone who isn't you picks up the phone. Can you imagine? Motion sensors won't even have to touch the phone to activate it from sleep mode. Um, one of the downsides is that you, with the Pixel 4 is that it's only available in select Pixel countries because of its radar. And Google will sell the phone where the gestures will not work and where motion sensor is not guaranteed in some countries because of tricky regulatory issues. Um, I think the phone is due out next month. So this promises to be more useful than a fingerprint and something that can be deployed on most smartphones, though it's likely the battery would take a hit if something like this is always running in the background. Just said that. Like many things, Google is, it sounds miraculous. Your phone will just know it's you. So I don't know what you think of that, peeps. I hope I didn't go on for too long, but let me have your comments. Bye bye.